Jim wanted me to do the whole thing, and um, it was like True Lies, and I just didn't. I think we were busy at the time with True Lies. Um, but we came back on Titanic. See, that, the big disappointment was the one I really wanted to do was Titanic, and we were um, going going to do the 65, I think there were 65 shots of the actual sinking, all that stuff forward was going to do. So I had the meetings with Jim, you know, started working it out. He didn't know that I'd been a Titanic buff my entire life. That's one of the, goes to my earliest years. I read Night to Remember when it came out. I was like six years old. <laughs> It was one of the first books I ever read. I struggled through it. Um, but uh, his company at that time basically said, you can't, I'll just sort of paraphrase it, you can't basically just hire anybody you want. You have a deal where we have like first right of refusal. They, wanted, they obviously wanted to do it there, you know, through their own people. But again, we got called back when it wasn't getting done, it wasn't getting finished to, you know, pick up and do these crazy shots. Again, it's like the, there's a shot in there where the, one of the funnels falls on, on uh, is it Fabrizio? Is that the character? I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's one of the characters that's in the pub at the beginning. So we did some shots in the pub with this guy and then later killed him with one of our shots. But uh, I think the original idea at um, Digital Domain was they were going to shoot a motion control. They were going to shoot this uh, funnel falling motion control. I think they're going to pull it away from the camera. I'm not sure exactly. We we got this thing. It was about 14 feet high. We said, well, why why do that? It's a funnel. It's supposed to fall. Why don't you just have it fall on the camera? So what we did was we stripped out the metal right where the camera would be on the on the ground and put show card and painted it. So when it fell, it just it just fell right on top of the camera and crumpled and fell to pieces. So we dropped we just dropped it on the camera, put a little cage around the camera, and, and uh, built a little pool of water and had it in a pool of water, and dropped it. You know, we were able to do multiple takes in any any given day, and we replaced the sheet metal with uh, basically a card card stock and some light uh, metal, I think some lead, and uh, painted it to match. And um, it was very quick and quick and easy. And I don't know why. Just like I can't, I couldn't imagine shooting it any other way. I I didn't understand why they wanted to shoot it motion control. But that was sort of the, that's I think part of the reason why it was taking so long to get stuff done, because everything was being done, pushed through this complex window, and just bring it to our stage, we'll drop it on, on the camera, you know. And, you know, maybe they were, I mean, my brother was, had to turn the camera on, and it was behind him to grab him, to pull him out of the way. Yeah, because this thing, once it fell, it just was right falling on top of us. But uh, maybe it's our uh, sense of adventure, you know, I, I think that's part of it, too, we're kind of enjoy that sort of a thing, there's a there is an adventure to doing that sort of thing. You, know? you ask yourself, why did I put myself in this situation? <laughs> why did I say I could do this? And then you're glad that you did. You know, I've had a series of really good films, uh, Apollo 13, uh, Godzilla. Um, but I think my most favorite film has been uh, Titanic. Um, I was uh, asked by James Cameron to uh, build the models on the, on the movie. And... Um, it was definitely a daunting challenge. The, uh, the model had to be large enough that we could put all the detail we wanted, but um, not too large so that we couldn't film it. So uh, we settled on about a 120th scale uh, miniature uh, for that, which would allow us all the detail that we needed and would not exceed like the 45 or, or 50 feet that they could get the depth of field with. But um, I would say that that movie was probably the pinnacle as far as uh, model building and, and the attention to detail. We had a historian that worked with us every day. He was there um, guiding us and making sure that we would, you know, get the model as accurate as possible. And, uh, you know, until Avatar, it was the biggest film of all time. So, Also, you know, I mean, the good thing about that model was is that um, it never touched the water. You know, it was... That made me happy, based on the experiences of my first film and a few other small films that I did on the way, that I didn't really want to put my models in water because they don't really work well. Um, you know, that's one, one thing where I really do embrace the digital uh, stuff is because they, they can put your boat in the water and um, it looks great. They can add the smoke. They can add people to the decks, which were nearly impossible, you know, in the past without having some kind of small little mechanical person just wiggling or whatever. Now you can have them running, dancing, or falling into the ocean, you know. It's, 
It's, yeah. it's really cool. On a bigger show, I mean, you know, like Titanic is a very large show, but it seems that people are always chasing dollars uh, on those shows. So even though there's appearance of there's a lot of money, um, they're always trying to hold you to a very tight line um, because they know that someplace else in the show they're going to be going over and the model guys are the guys that w they can beat up the easiest. So, um, but we still, you know, deliver no matter what, we'll deliver the best possible quality because we love our work. You know, I mean, other people in the industry, I don't, you know, I, I love their work too. And I think we love ours more though. <laughs> <laughs> building something that's 45 feet long and then building a matching wreck. I mean, wrecks were amazing because the, James had been to the wrecks, so uh, one day I know he came in and, and uh, he saw a railing that was on, on, on the wreck and he took it off and, and uh, one of the model makers said, but that's in the picture here. And he goes, no, it's not here anymore. I knocked it off, so it's gone. And uh, he just took it and threw it away. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges in, in our business and sometimes uh, we're very successful at solving them. Sometimes um, we have to call in somebody else to, to solve the problem because we just, it's not within our skill set. And, uh, um, you know, over the last 30 or so years that I've been in this business, um, you know, I've seen a lot of changes, but for the most part, the techniques we used 30 years ago still work today. <laughs>